Sorry, event coordinator is my side job. So, change to next year. Saman, right? Yes. There you go. I am able to present. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Yep, we can see your screen. OK, perfect. Um, thank you. Uh, my name is Aman Arora. Uh, I'm a PhD candidate and a graduate fellow at UT Austin. Um, a little bit about the background of, you know, why I'm presenting this talk here today. Um, I, I was a, a leader in the AI uh, FPGA committee in the OS FPGA Foundation, uh, which recently got, um, you know, joined hands with Chips Alliance. So this project that I'm presenting here was actually something that um, we had been working on at UT in my research lab. And um, I was trying to get some traction on this uh, in, the, uh, in the committee at uh, OSFPJ. And now that you know, it's, everything is a part of Chips Alliance, um, through, through this presentation, I'm, kind of, I'm going to give you an overview of what this project is, what we have done so far, and also kind of do a, you know, a call for contributions towards the end uh, to see if you know, people are interested in this kind of work. And if there is, you know, um, a scope for, you know, we, we will be submitting this project as a sandbox project under Chips Alliance and seeing, you know, which uh, working group does this fit under or maybe starting a new working group or, or something like that. So uh, that's the background. Um, and the title of the talk is Data Set for ML Guided Chip Design. Um, I'm going to get started now. Uh, but before actually I go into the details of this talk, um, I want to thank Ji Gang Wei, uh, who is a PhD student in our lab. Uh, he's the gorgeous person who is doing the hands-on work on this project. And I also want to thank my advisor, you know, Lizzie John, um, you know, who has been funding all of us <laughs> so far. All right. So um, ML or machine learning has been used for chip design for a lot of work. Uh, you know, I'm showing here a, a few uh, of the papers that I've come across in the recent uh, past. Uh, you know, the works in this area, uh, you know, range from applying ML to, you know, doing placement or floor planning better, which is the famous paper from Google to um, you know, doing prediction of, of some metric, like predicting resource usage uh, for an FPGA, you know, design uh, using a, an ML model or trying to predict the power consumption of running some code on an FPGA or a GPU, uh, given the power consumption or given the performance counters when that application is run on a CPU. So, um, and actually, uh, specifically because I come from the FPGA uh, field, that's my main area of research. Um, there are a lot of papers uh, applying ML to perform prediction or improving the estimates uh, of, uh, you know, uh, area area frequency, power consumption, etc. Um, that are uh, that that are gener the estimates that are generated by you know high level synthesis tools, for example. So uh, all of these, um, you know, uh, experiments or projects to use ML for chip design, they need data sets. And um, if you see that, you know, generating a data set for, for, for these uh, projects is actually pretty time consuming. It requires, you know, tools and licenses that may be proprietary. You know, it requires you know a, a person to generate uh, scripts to to run and parse the results. 
Uh, of course, it needs a lot of machines you know, to run those tools. And also, um, you know, somebody has to curate the whole thing to make sure that uh, the data set is actually usable. Um, and all of the, uh, I shouldn't say all, but we looked through many of the uh, projects that I flashed through on the previous slide. And we see that all of them had proprietary data sets that are not available in, in open source. And for every project, you know, a new data set is created kind of on an ad hoc basis. Uh, and therefore, we have a lot of custom data sets that are available right now. And, um, and if you look at the contents of the data sets used by, uh, you know, the plethora of studies that exist out there, it's not a it's not a large variety. There is a small subset of um, type of data that keeps getting used in most of these um, projects. And some of them I'm listing here, you know, um, graphs of net list of HDL designs, uh, signal activity with that with the graph of the net list performance counters, you know, uh, of a C application running on hardware, um, power consumption, either measured from a tool or measured on a board, um, you know, FPGA resource usage and timing for a particular HDL, uh, you know, design, um, 2D images of flow planning in place and robot circuits. So this, this is the kind of five, six type of data that we, we came across. And so it turns out that many of these projects can actually reuse this data. They don't need to recreate the data set. But for that, data sets need to be present in the open source so they can be used by multiple people. Um, so we believe that open source data sets can be very useful in the research community. And we have actually started this project quite a long time ago. Um, you know, We only have one person uh, working on this and not even full time. Um, and th there is a lot of other, uh, you know, focus uh, when we are working on developing this uh, this uh, data set. So, um, so the, the 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 you know the data set that we will present right now, um, until very recently, we believed that that was the first one that would be uh, you know available. But we recently saw just in October 2022, I think it was in ICCAT, I don't remember which conference, but it was released uh, by Peking University. It's a, it's a data set called CircuitNet. And it, it's a very small data set that covers mostly the uh, you know, flow planning, placement, and routing type of information uh, for ASIC designs. But what we are working on is this thing that we are calling chip design data set, CD squared S. Um, it has a set of HDL designs uh, and a set of C applications. Rather, I should say it has data collected from a set of HDL designs and a set of C applications. Um, the HDL designs we are sourcing from open cores. You know, there is a bunch of designs in VTR, very lot to routing. Um, there's a there is a benchmark called Coios inside VTR um, and VDLA and some other sources of open uh, you know designs. So we are taking these designs and then taking them through different flows to generate the kind of data uh, in the data set. And similarly for C applications, we are taking C applications from Polybench, CF Stone, um, Max Suite, et cetera, and um, generating similar data. Uh, for C applications, we first take them through an HLS flow and then generate the data um, because eventually we want to you know, implement these C applications onto uh, uh, hardware. Now, um, let me give you a quick overview of what kind of data we are collecting. Um, there are features. Um, you know, every every model that you train needs you know features and and some metrics that are typically target metrics for training for the model, training the model for. Um, the kind of features that we are looking at or we are collecting are number and size of primary inputs and outputs, number of operators, number of memory bits, size of the design, what application is the design from. Um, you know, what are the number of registers, uh, you know, or signals or FSMs in, in the HDL designs? What are the number of basic blocks, conditionals, et cetera, in the C applications? Um, and then we have some metrics that we are collecting. So for each design, we are collecting how much area does it consume? And the, the metric for that, like it, it is in terms of resource usage for FPGAs, but in terms of just an area number for, um, for ASICs. 
And then we're collecting power consumption numbers, wire length numbers, operating frequency, et cetera. And we want to do this for multiple FPGA devices, for multiple FPGA vendors, uh, because we want this data set to be usable by many people. Um, just collecting data for one device or one vendor is not enough. Um, and similarly, on the ASIC side, we want to be collecting data for uh, multiple ASIC libraries or multiple PDKs. And um, also for multiple implementation settings, which uh, in case of C designs refers to you know, different settings of HLS pragmas, um, or in, term, in, in the ASIC world, it refers to you know, different Git level uh, synthesis options and multiple process kernels also. So we are trying to make this data set exhaustive enough um, so that it covers a lot of these studies that uh, are being done by researchers um, and also um, that people don't have to kind of you know, redo a lot of the work um, that is involved in generating a data set. Now, um, before we actually kind of publish this data set, we also want to run some case studies to make sure that this data set is valuable enough. And this is the this chart here is showing the, the space of case studies that we are thinking of undertaking. We will not be doing all of them. We have some in mind that we're working on right now. Um, but the idea is that let's say the user wants to train um, a model, an ML model to, uh, you know, yeah, so if we're training an ML model and the user can be give, can give either the C code as its input and a, or a very long code as, as its input. So for these two, that is why we are using you know, collecting data for C applications as well as HDL designs. Um, the kind of input required for training for, for, for these, um, um, you know, data sets, it can be, you know, features generated from the RTL or features generated from synthesis outputs or, you know, features of the FPGA that the design is being implemented on or features of an ASIC library. All of that is, it can be training input. And the metric that we might want to predict um, uh, can be you know, predicting power consumption of a given C code running on a specific FPGA or predicting uh, the internet usage or predicting the operating frequency, for example. And we want to target both FPGAs and ASICs. And I'm showing here a stack of FPGAs and a stack of ASICs because we want this prediction, you know, these case studies to do cross prediction also, predicting from one FPGA to another. Uh, so right now, the case study that we are working on uh, actually follows this. It, it, it follows this path in this in this chart, the, the path that got just highlighted with yellow. So um, let me define that 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 problem that uh, for which we are designing the case study. So um, we will we are training a model that will take in a piece of C code or a C application of a user. It will be trained on. RTL features and HLS outputs. It will predict the power consumption for that C code running on a particular FPGA and actually running on, you know, train on one FPGA and predicting on another FPGA. That's the case study we are working on right now. Um, so through this case study, this is just the first one. We hope to do more case studies in the same, uh, you know, in this space and kind of, um, you know, establish that this data set is, is useful enough. So where are we right now? The, this is the link. And I'll quickly um, show, you know, just flash this uh, uh, this GitHub link. Uh, there is the, the QR uh, code, by the way. But this is how the, the, you know, the GitHub link looks like. It's under, right now, under our uh, lab's um, GitHub uh, project. And so, there is some documentation. It's it's definitely it needs to be improved. But there are you know at the top level there are two levels in it: ASIC and FPGA. Um, and if you, for example, go into the ASIC, there is some documentation of you know where the data data is, how it can be used, etc. And right now we have two types of data. One is you know data in CSV files, um, and one is data in tarballs because there was some data that we wanted to make a part of this data set, but it was huge, right? You know, multiple gigabytes of data that we didn't want to put on GitHub. So we have created tarballs for that kind of data. Um, but for some simple data, like, you know, collecting information about resource usage or information about timing, uh, et cetera, that we have parsed ourselves and put in CSV files. 
So that's how the data set looks like. That's where we are. Um, uh, the current focus that we have is FPGA, da collecting data for FPGA. We're not focusing on ASIC right now. Um, and we have a sufficiently large number of HDL designs and um, you know, gen generated designs from C applications. And we have some funding for this project as well. Uh, we recently applied for funding uh, with Meta uh, for this project. And um, this, is, this is going to, this is planned to be an open source project. Um, and so the next steps for, for this project are, you know, we want to, in, in the FPGA flow side, we want to continue collecting data for Max Suite and CH Stone. Right now, we only have data for Polybench benchmarks. And on the Verilog side, we are, we are currently parsing contents from Joseph's reports, but we also want to you know, run VTR and Rivado and maybe Quartus and parse reports for those uh, from those and, and generate data for that. And the ASIC flow is something we haven't started yet. So as I said earlier, we want to bring this project to Chips Alliance. Um, we are going to submit this as a sandbox project soon. And the call to contribute is um, you know, to kind of help us build this data set, be bigger and have more value and use, you know, use this data set, right? Um, find issues, find bugs, et cetera, in the data set while you contribute. Um, and the kind of work that will be involved, it will be, you know, writing scripts, running these tools and parsing data and collecting them. So in summary, um, you know, ML is being used in chip design processes uh, by so many researchers out there, so many companies out there. Um, but the, the data sets that are used by those projects are not open source, and we want to build an open source data set. And that's why we at UT Austin are working on CD Square S. And um, we hope that people will be interested in this kind of work and contribute through chip science. All right, that is the last slide. So I will stop sharing. And um, please ask questions if you have any. All right. Uh, so uh, I don't. I don't know if that was mentioned in the presentation, but I, I think I didn't see that. Uh, the repo does not contain a license. Uh, I assume it's just a temporary thing. But just make sure that you kind of uh, uh, put an Apache license there, so that we can kind of smoothly onboard it into chips uh, when the right time comes. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks for noting that. Yeah, we're missing a license. <laughs> and, and I asked this question uh, not just to be smart, but more like uh, very often when there's no license, it kind of implies that there is a problem with the license, or uh, someone has some kind of uh, not, not doesn't have crystallized plans for what the license is going to be. I think that's not the case here, right? You're actually uh, trying to get it into Chips Alliance, which requires Apache. So it's kind of an obvious thing to add, which raises the confidence of people when they look at the repo, they're like, oh yeah, it, it's Apache, it's fine. I can use that. And of course, like the follow-up question is, uh, and I don't want to make things hard for you, but like when you generate this data, uh, and I'm not an expert, I'm a lawyer, but to just make sure that you, you can actually license it under Apache, um, because, like you know, AI is complicated in that way, where the kind of data you parse, uh, kind of, and the results from this uh, whole endeavor, kind of, uh, the source material can influence, so to say, the output. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I think we actually were having some discussions in general about you know open sourcing data from you know commercial tools. Um, but yeah, I think uh, specifically thinking about whether it, it is, you know, <laughs> are we allowed to, uh, you know, publish data under the Apache license? We maybe we'll look into that. And of course, uh, Chips Alliance kind of uh, has a legal committee and, and kind of potentially could help in figuring that out. So I'm not saying that we're, uh, you know, we have a very strong track record of figuring out, you know, AI for chip design data sets as such, right? It's a fairly kind of new field, I would say. Uh, but certainly there's, there's lawyers involved, right? So it doesn't have to be just developers talking to developers and trying to figure out if we have a good understanding of the law <laughs> that we can actually get professional help. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll, I'll reach out to Rob. Um, I hope you, you can connect me to the legal people, Rob. <laughs> My favorites. Don't quote me on that, please. I was being recorded, now I'm in trouble. I, I did want to ask you one question, Ma. I enjoyed your talk. Have, 
you working at all with uh, SI2? I know there's some initiative. I, I was meeting with Professor Andrew Kong here about a month back in San Diego and Tom Spiro, and I know there's some initiative to create a standardized API for collecting metrics that you would need relative to uh, chip design, you know, rather than having to uh, endlessly parse reports, you know, never my favorite topic, I might add, but just curious if you guys are working on that at all. No, we just have custom scripts to parse data. Um, can you tell me who you mentioned is working on something like that? I'm sorry, ask a question again, please. Um, who did you say is working on creating this? It, this is under SI2, which okay. is, uh, I don't want to say it's a proprietary organization, that's not quite right, but it is heavily participated in by the EDA industry, but it may help resolve some of the questions or concerns, assuming that they make this API publicly available under Apache 2 dial license that, you know, Michael was correctly sharing, right? And of course, that is a concern relative to using data that is generated by any of the proprietary solutions, so. Okay, gotcha. We had a question here in the audience. Yeah, so I had this question that um, uh, ties into this as well, and that is, I saw you were talking about FPGA flows that you were using, and you had thought about NASIC flow. I was wondering if you have looked at using Edelice uh, to, um, to target a lot of different FPGA and NASIC uh, targets, okay. and also related to that, I mean, that could also be a good place to put uh, this kind of uh, report parsing uh, in a centralized place, two birds in one stone. Yeah, we haven't looked at EDLIs. I am actually slightly familiar with it. Uh, I remember, uh, you know, there were discussions about it in the VTR group, um, but no, I haven't. We haven't looked into it at all uh, for for this purpose for this data set. I, I look. Great. Now, one more. Any more questions? Or one more question? Okay, thank you much, so much for your talk, chat, Amon. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So our next presenter is uh, Michael Gilda from uh, Ant Micro, co-founder of Ant Micro and VP of uh, Outreach and Development. Uh, Michael helps me quite a bit on Chips Alliance, so I really do appreciate that. So I think this will be a great talk. Let me call in and see if it all works. Present. 